Well, Tottenham were top of the Premier League table ahead of last week's matches, but a defeat to Crystal Palace means Chelsea go into this Sunday's meeting a point better off than them and in good form following a Champions League win midweek as well. So let's start our discussion on this game with the pre-match thoughts of both managers. We had big tests before because um, I'm very honest with you. The Premier League is always a big test. All the games are very hard. All the matches are extremely difficult because all the tough, all the opponents are very tough. They have quality, talented players, good managers, good ways of playing. And we're going to face a tough opponent on Sunday. Uh, but we're going to be ready. Focus on ourselves and do and do the things that we do best. We compete. We must compete. We are facing a tough opponent. It's a London derby, and uh, we have uh, we had a great result in the in the last season. We will try everything to to um, to repeat it. But no matter who plays, some players came also back, and they will do everything to to have their players back on the pitch. So we expect a tough side and and um, and a big crowd and um, a great match to play. We can do better, but uh, we are a team that's tough to beat, and and it's it's much easier to have results and play better than to than play good, have no results and keep the momentum going. It's it's in the place where we are. It's easier uh, because of course a win helps uh, to 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 have a good atmosphere, to keep calm, to be open for criticism, and and this helps. And I think that. In the moment, I feel that everybody is aware that, that we, can, we can do better. Well, it's a huge London derby to look forward to. We're all looking forward to this one. And you wouldn't really bet against Chelsea to go and get all three points in this one, Tim, especially the form they're in, the yeah. record they've got in London derbies away from home as well. They've won their last five. Yeah, and on the back of uh, Tottenham's poor result at Palace, um, I thought it was a poor performance from, from Tottenham. And I, and I think they've been getting away with it all season, apart from, the Pal uh, obviously, the Man City game early on, where they sat back and, they, you know, Lucas Moura was outstanding and, and Sonny and, and Bergwijn. Um, they've got some injuries as well. Um, I think they're suiting to play on the counter-attack. I'm not sure the crowd are going to allow them to do that against Chelsea, albeit Chelsea a very, very good side. Um, so the pressure's on them to come out and show a little bit, a little bit more enterprise. And um, I think with Lukaku up front there, it could cause them a few problems. They've got injury problems as well, Tottenham. So It's, it's hard to look beyond any, anything but a relatively convincing Chelsea win. But it's, I think as, as interesting as anything, is what approach he comes up with, whether, whether he sits, sits back as against City or as mm. Tim says, whether there's a bit of pressure to actually go for it, which mm. could be the danger here. Mm. Going into mm. last weekend, Tottenham were the only team with a 100% record still, mm. so the results have been there, but as Tim pointed out, mm -hmm. the performances haven't really been there. It's not been that exciting no. to watch, and now he finds himself in a bit of a difficult situation after a draw in the Europa Conference League yeah. midweek, losing quite mm. a lot of players to injury. Oh, this is a tough one, yeah. right? It is a tough one, um, you know, and like you say, you know, the Tottenham fans was, you know, hadn't conceded a goal, sat at the top of the league and thought things were rosy, but like the guys are saying, the City game, it was a good result, good performance, but then after that, yes, they got away with the results, you know, Wolves and Watford, but they didn't blow them away. Um, and if they want to get in the top four, they're, they're matches they have to win. Um, so, you know, that, that, you know, you're not going to write home about those results. Um, and then they just get rolled over completely by Palace. So... It, it, but, you know, but having said that, they've still won three games in four. Um, it's, I think it's just the manner that, that it's happening. You know, they, they haven't scored more than once. Um, Kane's hit a little flat spot. Um, so it's, it's, it's strange to put your finger on it. But, as, again, as the guys are saying, I can't see past Chelsea with this result. I think Lukaku and uh, players like Ziyech will have an absolute field day against Tottenham's defence, unfortunately for them. Well, that's the trouble, isn't it? Mm. How do you stop a man like Lukaku, who's in such fine form with that defence that Nuno's got to work with? What would you do as a manager going into this game? Do you change things tactically? Uh, no, I don't think Nuno would change things. I think he knows one way of playing, which is very pragmatic, get bodies behind the ball and hopefully counter-attack the opposition. I think it's the only way to go about this one. Unfortunately, he's going to be under pressure because the Tottenham fans will not like to accept it. Um, but look at the array of goals. I mean, he can come short, he can hold the uh, play up. Look at the way he just put peels off here, peels off, rolls it into his, his path and his emphatic finish. I mean, he's got everything, Lukaku, he's, he scares you to death. I mean, that game on Sunday, I and mean, then Tottenham, whoever it is, if Eric Dyer's fit, uh, if Tanganga we know is out through uh, suspension, Sanchez possibly might come into it. They're going to need some pace, but they're going to need some strength and they're going to have to also think about how they're going to approach it. 
But one thing's for sure, Saturday night, they do not sleep. <laughs> <laughs> thing is, though, there is a way to stop Lukaku. He doesn't score in every single game of his career, so he has been stopped before. They could find a way, but what is it? I mean, it, it feels like it's going to have to be Nuno coming up with some sort of system because, just as, as Tim's alluded to there as well, it's hard not to see a situation where Lukaku bullies whatever centre half Spurs have on on Sunday. I mean, they're not exactly bringing in much experience or kind of or clout, are they? And I think that that that's the real worry for them. He, I think he's got to come up with something a little bit different. Mm. Mm. Well, he's a phenomenal striker, as is Harry Kane, but the Harry Kane that we haven't seen yet this season. So, if you were to pick between the two strikers, <laughs> who would you pick, Glenn? Who would you not want to face as a defender? Uh, yeah, right now it has to be Lukaku. Um, like the guys are saying, he's you know he's powerful. He, he, he can play so many different ways. You know, I think the only the best way to play against him is stop everyone having time on the ball around him. So you know, stop the service into him, try and suffocate him from the ball. Um, because you know, sometimes against the big guys, you let them have the ball drop off a little bit. But with this guy, he's tactically aware, so he knows when to turn at the right times. But then ultimately, if you want to get tight and physical with him, then he's going he's gonna to love that just as much. So he's, you know, when he's on his game, he's, he's very hard to play against. Who would you rather have as a manager, Tim? Lukaku or Kane? Well, I've had Kane, so I'll have Lukaku. <laughs> <laughs> Good answer. Fair enough. <laughs> so I think it's the support, support act as well. Obviously, Chelsea have got a better, better yeah. cast. You know, when it comes to certainly in attacking areas, I mean, Kovacic has been outstanding this season as well. Jorginho in there. Kante will be back fit if they choose to pick him. Um, you know, even Alonso and Ryan James, you know, given the width and, and as, mm. as Glenn says there, you know, Ziyech comes in if, he, if he's picked, Mason Mount. I mean, just roll off the tongue, don't mm. they? They're, they're all world-class players, you know. So, and for, uh, for Tottenham, you know, you've got Harry Kane, you need Son to support him. Mm. Other than that, midfield looks like a, a mismatch in there, really. So they will control the football. And I think there's, there really is only one way, unfortunately for the Tottenham fans, to go about getting a result here. And that's to sit back and hopefully your ball carriers like Lucas Moura, who's had a good start to the season, will be able to take him forward. But we know he picked up an injury. So mm. it's, it's going to be a tough one. Yeah, mm. you mentioned Chelsea's central midfielders there. Kovacic and Jorginho have been outstanding. They're outstanding from the back end of last season as well. And now you add Kante into the mix, who should be fit and back ready to start this game. Who'd you drop? Well, this is it. Mm. I mean, they've got incredible options. I mean, you'd have to feel if Kante's coming back in, and given how Jorginho has just increased in importance global and has been probably one of the best players in Europe over the past year, it'd be Kovacic to lose out. But then do you want that when suddenly he's hitting such a, a good run of form? To be fair to both those players as well, it's I mean, quite a turnaround for them personally, given Jorginho, when he came to the club, he was considered almost Maurizio Sarri's son and kind of that no one else would want him. Um, but he's, he's excelled. Mm. And mm. Kovacic was seen as kind of almost someone that was a, a little bit bit part at the start. Mm. But both of them now are actually just, you know, they, they form the centre of this team. Yeah, well, they signed mm. to Kovacic when they had the embargo. Yeah, they yeah, yeah. Signing. So we took him on loan and they, they made it a permanent after. Mm. But he's world class. I mean, he's got everything. Mm. Mm. And we can dribble, we can, his range of passes is unbelievable. Every club in the bag. The reason Jorginho has been accepted now because he's got someone like Lukaku who he doesn't mind passing forward mm. to. Whereas mm. before, he was passing it forward and it was coming straight back. And so he decided not to pass forward and keep going square. It was a little bit boring. The Chelsea fans were getting frustrated mm. with that. Now they've got that option. Mm. Like Glenn said, I mean, you play against Lukaku, you can't defend high because he'll run you in behind. You drop off, he'll come deep, pick up the ball and run at you. They beat you all ends up. Chelsea mm. have got, it, got the lot and they've got a top, top draw manager. You add mm. Saul into that as well. He didn't have the best debut. Being hooked off at half-time isn't exactly how you want to start your Chelsea career. Mm. But then you add him into the mix as well. We know what he's capable of, Miguel. Yeah. Is this Chelsea squad the best squad in the Premier League? Yeah, I think it's the one with the least gaps or drop-offs. If you can even, it's even any sort of drop-offs or gaps at all. It's just strong everywhere. So even with City, say, they're still lacking at number nine. United are lacking at number six at the base midfield. Liverpool maybe lacking a little bit of strength and depth, even though the first 11 is so strong. Mm. With Chelsea, they've got that first 11, mm. and then almost another 11 on top of that, yeah. even right down mm. to the goalkeepers. Yeah, certainly. When you match these two teams up today, if you looked at the bench for th in <laughs> yeah. the starting mm. lineup for Tottenham. Yeah. yeah, and then as you mentioned already, Tim, they also then have a world class manager in Thomas Tuchel. Since mm. his first game in charge of Chelsea, only Manchester City have taken more points than them. What a remarkable oh. change he's made to this Chelsea team. Yeah, and, and I think the most remarkable thing is how quickly he's done it. 
Um, you know, we all know, you know, he didn't inherit a bad squad, um, but the club wasn't in a great position at the time. And, you know, he's come in, he's been very accurate with, you know, the way he wants to play with the tactics. Everyone's bought into it straight away. Um, and almost overnight, they stopped conceding goals and, mm. and started dominating football matches. Um, and for me, I can't just quickly think about, I can't remember the last match that they didn't dominate. Yeah. Um, they just dominate. That's why I just think this is going to be impossible for yeah. Tottenham because the two clubs are in totally different, um, you know, sides of the ladder at the moment. And like I say, you, you think through Tottenham's side, mm. but this is a side that wants to get in the top four and not one of their players, other than Kane, that would probably get into the Chelsea side. Mm. He t- takes control of the situation. Even when uh, they go, go to Anfield, they go mm. down to 10 men. They're still in control of the football match. There's no mm. panic. We saw Man United when yeah, they get yeah. a man sent off and it just everything just goes to pot. Mm. He's got a plan for every situation. Mm. They've been so drilled, haven't they? Been fantastic. Mm. I mean, he went to the three at the back, which has changed from Lampard. It suited the majority of the squad. Rudiger has been outstanding since he's brought him back. You know, Chilwell can't get a game. Yeah. I mean, the England internationals cannot get a game. He, he can manage the personalities, the ones who are not playing, mm. because he's talking to them all of the time. The ones who are on the pitch, they're doing the business. He'll be saying to the rest of them, you'll get your time. And when you get the shirt, it's up to them to come and get it off you. But for the time being, this is my group of players who I'm going to mm. play. Billy Gilmore goes to Norwich. He, he plays for Tottenham if he's at Tottenham. Mm. He plays, he starts there on, mm. on Sunday. The, the guy's world class. And I think that the, the chairman has recognised that very early. He's delivered him the Champions League. And he's saying to him now, it's been a while, go and win the Premier League. What do you need? And he said, get me Lukaku. He said, done. There you go because he's earned the trust of the chairman. It's a nice place to be, isn't it? Um, <laughs> Timo Werner's a player we've not mentioned as well. Where does his future lie now Lukaku's arrived? I mean, I know Bayern Munich have an interest in him. That's been mooted. Um, and the lack of goals is an issue. But from what I'm told, and I suppose you can see it in the way he's used as well, Tuchel still really likes him because his pace just gives him something else. And I suppose, to be fair to Werner as well, what is remarkable, no matter how many chances he misses, and some of them are really bad, it never seems to affect him in any way. He'll still just keep going in mm. every sense. And I, I think, from what I've heard, Tuchel likes him a lot for the way he also, I suppose, sets the tone in terms of the press and kind of the way he pushes teams back with that, with that pace. Can you still see him fitting into this Chelsea side, Tim? Well, everyone thought that Havertz and, and Werner were going to be nailed on starts because of the German connection, but I think he's going to struggle. I think he's going to have to show the manager that he's got a lot more than just the press. I think he's going to have to show some quality in the end. He's shown quality in other countries, you know, we've seen him, he's a top scorer in, in Germany, but we see so many of them coming over. You talked about Sal, you know, in Spain, a superstar, mm. you know, Atletico Madrid, comes to the, to the Premier League and plays in midfield there. It was all too quick for him. Hopefully he settles and I'm sure he would improve it, um, but I don't think they get forever to improve. I think they're going to have to start mm. showing their worth, otherwise they get left out and eventually they just get moved on. Mm. Mm. Well, look, it's a London derby. We know how big a part the fans can play in this. You've played mm. in many derbies yourself, Glenn. Mm-hmm. How much will those fans help Spurs in this one? Might not. <laughs> well, yeah, that's what I say. Yeah. It all depends how they start, I think. Um, I think they could win them over or lose them in the first 10 minutes. Um, I think if they come out against Chelsea and don't try and land a glove on them or, and just sit back and be boring and just negative, then I think they'll lose the fans very quickly. Um, But obviously, you know, they are a good bunch of fans when they get rallying. So if they start quick and show that they want to roll their sleeves up and have a, you know, and have a go against Chelsea, then then I'm sure that the the fans will stand there and support them. Yeah, on a serious note, Tim, that that is one of the things that the players are going to have to contend with this Mm. year that they didn't have to last year, that when you're in a bit of a bad spell, when the pressure's on, Mm. the fans can get on your back. Absolutely. And they demand a certain style there at Tottenham. And I think Jose got away with that. Um, eventually it all turns sour but let's not forget Tottenham were top of the Premier League Mm. mid-December when they go to Anfield Um, so they can be out there for a long period of time and that all turns sour very very quickly but I thought Jose got away with it whereas Nuno's not going to have that privilege because the fans are there they're demanding um, and it's going to be very, be interesting if he can turn his hand to an attractive, uh, attractive way of playing. But we haven't seen it at Wolves, and I haven't mm. seen it so far at uh, Tottenham. But mm. that's why the appointment is, in some ways, inexplicable. To be honest, now I mean, it might have come down to the fact that Spurs basically couldn't get a manager for a certain point of the summer. But they came out at one point and they were explaining what they wanted. And no matter what you think of Nuno as a manager, results-wise. Like in terms of his football, that's, that's clear. It's basically yeah. it's reactive. It's you know based on a strong defence, and it's not necessarily about taking the game forward, which is what Spurs fans want and what mm. Tottenham said they wanted, but mm. ultimately came back round. And mm. I, I mean, it does make me think as well. I mean, we were talking about it earlier whether they'll move him on at the end of the season, regardless, and kind of go for it maybe 
something a bit more progressive. Mm. Interesting. All right, yeah. score? I'm going to go for another 2 0. Chelsea. Chelsea, away win. Tim? Away win. 3 1. Chelsea. Okay, two away wins. We'll see Miguel's a little mm -hmm. bit later.